Hi, this is Stu Schwartz from MasterMathMentor.com. This is video AB16A, and the topic is the first part of related rates. It covers the AB manual pages 79 and 80. So far in calculus, we've learned all about derivatives and how to take them. And we've learned about continuity and differentiability and how they apply to graphs. But what is it all used for? It is time to be rewarded. We are now going to look at a certain type of word problem, which is used in the real world all the time. These are called related rates. When we started this course, we used the basic definition of calculus as the mathematics of change. We defined words that were synonyms for change, whether positive or negative, such as increasing, decreasing, growing, shrinking, etc. Change occurs over time. So when we talk about how a quantity changes over time, it is a derivative with respect to t. So mathematically, rates are derivatives, and we call them related rates. We see eight statements that give mathematical information. We need to write these as equations with proper variables. It is important that we label the units as well. In A, John is 5 feet tall and growing at 3 inches per year. I choose h to represent John's height, and therefore h is 5 feet, and therefore dh dt is 3 inches per year. If we chose j to represent his height, then dj dt would be 3 inches per year. b. A storm is 750 miles from shore and approaching at 200 miles per day. I'll choose S to represent the distance from the storm, and therefore it is 750 miles. And DSDT is negative 200 miles per day. It is negative because it is approaching and therefore getting smaller. C, the radius of a puddle is 4 feet and is not changing. So R is 4 feet, and since it's not changing, dr dt equals 0. D, the volume of a cone is 12 pi cubic feet and shrinking at 5 pi in cubic inches per minute. Therefore, V equals 12 pi cubic feet, and dv dt equals negative 5 pi cubic inches per minute negative because the volume is shrinking. E, a car is two miles from a bridge and approaching the bridge at 20 miles per hour. I'll choose x to be two and therefore dx dt equals negative 20 miles per hour because the distance from the car to the bridge is getting smaller. F, the angle that a drawbridge makes with a road is currently 10 degrees and increasing at 3 degrees per second. So therefore, theta is equal to 10 degrees, and d theta dt equals 3 degrees per second. G and H are trickier because they discuss changes in rates. We will discuss this fully when we get to the section on function analysis. G says the value of a stock is $50 and increasing, but not as quickly as it was last week. That makes V equal to 50. And therefore, if V is increasing, then dV dt is positive. However, if it is not increasing as quickly as it was last week, that means the rate of change of increase is getting smaller. And therefore, the second derivative of v with respect to time is negative. H is trickier yet. You are told that the price of gas is $2.50 and going down, but not as fast as last year. That means that the price is p, and that is $2.50. 
If it is going down, that means its derivative with respect to time, dp dt, must be negative. But if this rate of change is not as fast as last year, that means it is less negative, meaning that d squared p over dt squared is a positive number. It can also be thought of when we talk about the price of gas as $2.50 per gallon. And you might argue, well, P is a derivative as well. For right now, though, it is easier to think of the price as just a plain $2.50, because all prices of gas are usually in terms of gallons, at least in the United States. If you don't fully understand the last two, don't be concerned yet. The goal of this is to show you how important it is to be able to identify information that is given and write it in an equation with the proper variables and proper units. Suppose we were told that a rectangle is 10 inches by 6 inches. What does this imply? By geometry, we know that our perimeter is 32 inches and our area is 60 square inches. That's all. But calculus is the study of change. Let's suppose one or both of the dimensions of the rectangle are changing. How does that affect the perimeter and the area? We know that the perimeter is equal to 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. So let's find out how the perimeter is changing at that moment in time. We take dp dt and perform implicit differentiation and get 2 dl dt plus 2 dw dt. How does the area change? We know that a is equal to LW, and therefore DA DT is, by the product rule, L DW DT plus W DL DT. In problems A through D, we are given information about how the length and the width are changing at that moment in time. And we are interested in finding out how the perimeter is changing at that moment in time and how the area is changing at that moment in time. In A, you're told that the length and width are increasing at the rate of 2 inches per second. This means that dl dt is 2 inches per second and dw dt is 2 inches per second. So we can see that the 10 by 6 rectangle in white in a second or two will be now looking like the rectangle in gray. So using our formulas, dp dt is equal to 2 times 2 plus 2 times 2, and therefore the perimeter is increasing at the rate of 8 inches per second. The area is changing at the rate of 10 times 2 plus 6 times 2, which is 32 square inches per second. Let's focus on the area. In one second, the 10 by 6 rectangle has changed to a 12 by 8 rectangle. That means that the area has changed from 60 to 96. So it has increased by 36 square inches per second. And yet, dA dt is equal to 32 square inches per second. Why? Recall the first lesson of the year. We made a distinction between average rate of change and instantaneous rate of change. In one second, the rectangle has averaged a rate of change of 36 square inches per second. But at the time when it is 10 by 6, it is, the area is increasing by 32 square inches per second. Just because we get an average rate of rainfall of 1 inch per hour 
between 10 and 11 o'clock does not mean that it is raining at 10 inches per hour at 10 o'clock. In B, the length and width are both decreasing at the rate of 2 inches per second. So this just changes dl dt to negative 2 inches per second and dw dt also to negative 2 inches per second. The rectangle now will now be getting smaller. So notice that dp dt and da dt are just negatives of what they were in question A. In C, we're told that the length is increasing at the rate of 2 inches per second, but the width is decreasing at the rate of 2 inches per second. So dl dt is equal to 2 inches per second, but dw dt is equal to negative 2 inches per second. Looking at the white rectangle, we see that it turns into the gray rectangle. The question is, is the perimeter changing? and getting larger or smaller, and is the area changing and getting larger or smaller? Using our formulas, dp dt equals 2 times 2 plus 2 times negative 2, which is 0. So the perimeter is not changing at that moment in time. But the area is 10 times negative 2 plus 6 times 2, which is negative 8 square inches per second. So even though the perimeter is not changing, the area is getting smaller. In D, you're told that the length is decreasing at 4 inches per second, while the width is increasing at 2 inches per second. So dl dt is equal to negative 4 inches per second, while dw dt is equal to 2 inches per second. So dp dt equals 2 times negative 4 plus 2 times 2, which is negative 4 inches per second. The ADT is 10 times 2 plus 6 times negative 4, which is also negative 4, but measured in square inches per second. In problem 2, we are given a right circular cylinder with height 9 feet and radius 4 feet. And we are interested in how fast the volume and surface area of the cylinder is changing when the radius and height are changing at different rates. The volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. So dv dt equals pi times the derivative of r squared h, which is a product. And we get r squared dh dt plus h times 2r dr dt. The lateral surface area of the cylinder, not including the top and bottom, is given by the formula S is equal to 2 pi RH, and therefore dS dt is equal to 2 pi times the quantity of R dH dt plus H dr dt. In A, you're told that the radius is increasing at 2 feet per minute and the height is decreasing at 3 feet per minute. So dr dt is equal to 2 and dh dt is equal to negative 3. So the picture of the cylinder looks like the blue originally and will eventually start to look like the red. So dv dt is by the formula pi times the quantity 16 times negative 3 plus 2 times 9 times 4 times 2. And that turns out to be 96 pi cubic feet per minute. dS dt is equal to 2 pi times the quantity 4 times negative 3 plus 9 times 2, which is 12 pi square feet per minute. Both the volume and the surface area are increasing despite the fact that the height is decreasing. In B, you're told that the radius is decreasing at 2 feet per minute, and the height is increasing at the rate of 3 feet per minute. So dr dt is equal to negative 2, while dh dt is equal to 3. And our cylinder goes from the blue to the red, and it becomes much skinnier. So dv dt is equal to pi times the quantity 16 times 3, plus 2 times 9 times 4 times negative 2, which is negative 96 pi cubic feet per minute. 
while ds dt is equal to 2 pi times the quantity 4 times 3 plus 9 times negative 2, which is negative 12 pi square feet per minute. So in this problem, despite the fact that the height is increasing, both the volume and surface area are getting smaller. In C, the same cylinder has its radius increasing at 3 feet per minute, but at that moment in time, its volume is unchanged. We would like to find out how fast the height is changing. So we know everything except dh dt. Our formula is d v dt is equal to pi times the quantity 16 dh dt plus 2 times 4 times 9 times 3. And we know that since the volume is unchanged, we set that equal to 0. So we end up with 16 dh dt equals negative 216, and therefore dh dt is equal to negative 27 over 2 feet per minute. So the height has to be decreasing at the rate of 13 and a half feet per minute to have the volume unchanged. In D, we're told that the height is increasing at 3 feet per minute, but the surface area at that moment in time is unchanged, and we would like to find out how fast the radius is changing. Using our DSDT formula, we know everything but DRDT. So DSDT is equal to 2 pi times the quantity 4 times 3 plus 9 DRDT, and since the surface area is unchanged, we set that equal to 0. That gives 9 dr dt equals negative 12, and therefore dr dt is equal to negative 4 thirds feet per minute. So if the height is increasing at 3 feet per minute, the radius would have to be decreasing at 4 thirds feet per minute So in order for the surface area to be unchanged. Related rates problems can be very intimidating to students. There is a lot being thrown at you, sometimes in the form of words, sometimes in the form of diagrams. There are many variables that you have to keep track of. And frequently, there's a lot of information that you have to find. Video 16b will go into the procedure of solving related rates problems and get them organized into a way that makes them easy for you to do.